today we are at a sawmill in the middle of Europe and I wanted to walk through with some of the experts what the different lumber is used for, what some of the benefits are. I thought you might enjoy it. Here we go. There's nothing more renewable than wood growing in a forest right now. Humanity doesn't know any more renewable resource than this. We're in the southern part of the country of Czechia. Uh, where trees grow bigger and faster. It's warm and nice and sunny. And we're at the University Forest Enterprise, which is one of the biggest landowners, forest landowners in the country. They have about 25,000 acres of forests and they grow all kinds of different trees and they grow them so that the forest stays forest forever. And so the reason why people just have, foresters just have to take a long-term view is that a typical lifespan on a tr of a tree from its seedling to maturity when it can be processed and turned into your kitchen table is about 100 years here. So there's no other view than long-term view that, that foresters can take. Whether this is clear-cut forestry or whether this is the selection forestry, it has to be thought about very long in advance. So let's look at the, some of the finest logs that they have here. Now amazingly here in Central Europe, the diversity of trees that they harvest from the forest is very low. In fact, there's only about a half dozen species that they harvest regularly from the forest. So I wanted to go today and look at spruce, larch, Scots pine, beech, oak, and ash, and have Yuri, the expert that I'm with, just talk about the differences in some of them because I think some of you might find it interesting. Isn't that amazing? This is a 150 years old spruce. And it was grown from the beginning. The idea, 150 years when they planted it, it was grown for you so you can make your roof. These are going to be incredible boards. It's straight, relatively hard. Here's oak. Can you see it in there? It's the desk in your kid's room. Look at the color, the grain, the structure. And it's like, you can't even stick your nail in it. It's so hard, it's such a hard wood. It's the hardest wood here in this region. It also lasts forever, by the way, if you want to make an outdoor comfy seating table for your, uh, you know, backyard parties. Use this one, don't use spruce. And here's ash, typical fine wood for a baseball bat. Also really hard lumber, really good, high quality. They grow fairly straight. The main reason why there is this big pile of them is not that it's a common tree. It's because there's a disease of ash that's going through the landscape. You know, in North America, we have the emerald ash borer that's wiping out the species from the continent. Here, they have a fungal disease, invasive pathogen that's wiping out ash from the landscape. And again, how do you know when one of these will show up in your location? How do you know which tree is going to suffer from some sort of a new pathogen, new pest? It's the risk that we're talking about. These could have been growing much longer. And this is why in a, in a forestry, in, a, in the enterprise where you have to look long term, the critical thing is to dilute your risk because you never know what's going to hit you. Like these poor ash trees. This is larch. Larch is also super straight, also grows relatively fast, but also lasts very long. Scott pine, that grows really fast, grows on anything, any type of soil. If you need to establish a forest, Scots pine is your pioneer plant and it grows super fast too. And it can be used for whatever, furniture, structural, structural timber, anything. Matches, matchsticks. It is very drought tolerant. It doesn't really have bark beetle problems. It's a very, it's a great tree to grow, very easy to grow. So this is beech, you know, this can be 120 years old and they are harvesting them at the right time for when they're exactly the right size for the sawmill so that your chairs can be made of the finest quality and sustainable. All oh, right, so they're waiting oh, for, the, the, for the tree to be about 50 centimeters thick. Uh, then it's ideal, then it's ideal to take it out of the forest and it's ideal for processing in the, in the mill. And the amazing thing is that now that this 100 year old grandpa was taken out of the forest, it had plenty of time to sprinkle the forest with its seeds and its babies are now already pretty big 
and you know in a couple of decades they're gonna take its progeny and the new generation is gonna grow there it's a resource forever silver fir it grows a little slower than the dominant spruce it's not as simple uh, in terms of silviculture it lasts forever so it depends on what you want to do with your timber perhaps it's better to invest in little slow growing but much more durable species okay let me walk you through quickly how it works from taking these boards dropping them onto a conveyor and then getting them into the lumber mill uh, i was surprised i had never seen this process before but i got an up close and personal view essentially you have this giant saw which is kind of set up more like a belt and the wood moves back and forth it flips it chops it flips it chops it and allows them to kick out all the different sizes of lumber that they need now the whole process is automated so once it's cut here by the belt saw then it's put down a conveyor belt and then it's kicked out in different places so this one in particular was going to an area for this sized lumber other lumber was kicked completely outside of the lumber mill which they stacked up on pallets like this overall a very simple and interesting process to watch it is it is a little bit odd because i mean this is just wood you get it at the hardware store and it's stacked just like this but uh, it is funny that you, you you know that that just came from there and in there the wood came from the, the trees and the trees came from the forest that we were just in just harvested here um, gives you kind of a good appreciation for the whole cycle of where the wood comes from Thanks for watching that short, looking at some of the different types of lumber that are here in Central Europe. I thought it would be kind of interesting just to hear what Yuri had to say. I found it fascinating. Now, all of this was really part of a larger video that I'm doing with Yuri about the spruce bark beetle outbreaks that are happening and what we can learn about it worldwide. So stay tuned for that on the main Stone Age Man channel, and I will see you all in another video.